You know, you have the truest friend when she stops her shoulder pump to do cardio with you. Can you see that halo above my head? Cut that workout short Ding! to help her do cardio. I deserve a trophy. <laughs> Oh goodness gracious. My oh my. Cardio will be the death of me forever. Just kidding. Good morning everyone. I am about to head out for my morning cardio. It is Saturday and I am very tired right now. Yesterday was a rest day, hence my no videoing yesterday. Oh, it is cold out. Surprise, surprise. It's freezing. I'm about to head into the car, so we'll see you guys when I get to the gym. Look at all that snow. Actually, you know what? That's not a lot compared to Ottawa. Ottawa always gets so much snow. I miss that place, but that's that. I will talk to you guys when I go to the gym. I just finished my cardio, and it is literally so cold outside that there's steam coming off of me right now. That's how cold it is. That's fucking crazy. Hit up LA, Milton, it's, it's cold. Pretty much, welcome to Canada. I think it's like minus like 10, but I'm out here in a t-shirt because I didn't want to stick to my jacket because that's just gross. And I was like 10 feet from the door, so I don't really care. I'm gonna go home, make my breakfast as usual, and I'll talk to you guys later. So I'm about to crush the most fast and hardcore quad workout. Well, I did cardio this morning and I was really tired for some reason. I've been really tired lately. My diet hasn't really changed, but I guess all the cardio um, <clears throat> that I'm doing in the morning is catching up to me. I'm gonna go do quads. As I mentioned, it's gonna be fast um, and it's gonna be freaking killer. You guys will, might see a little bit of it, but it's gonna be very fast. I'm in a really big rush. I work at two and it's 12 right now. And I like to have at least half an hour getting ready. So it'll be like a quick hour workout. I'm making my coffee right now. And I will see you uh, when I get to the gym. Or I'll see you guys later. Bye. Told you guys that I'm going to be doing a few videos of advice about competing and about sort of my background in the fitness industry and stuff like that. Something that I really wanted to touch base on to start off with was um, girls who say that they want to compete to me. They say, oh, you're so inspiring. I want to do that. I want to compete. And that's awesome. I think that's great if you look at the surface of things. So everything looks so much fun from other people's perspectives. Social media um, definitely twists that around to perceive the average fitness competitor or um, bodybuilder as living this lifestyle of healthiness. You have so much motivation to go to the gym. You eat so healthy. You take all these supplements. How do you know what to take? How do you have the motivation to get up at 5 a.m. every morning? So one of the things that I did want to touch on, as I mentioned, was when girls say that to me, not necessarily boys, I don't really have um, too much of an insight on how a male competitor is. I mean, I do have a lot of, like the majority of my guy friends do compete. Some of them don't, don't get me wrong. Some of them don't compete and that's totally fine. But the ones who do compete, they have a different mindset um, as opposed to girls. So for me personally, I have always been sort of athletic my entire life, so I've done every sport from lacrosse to soccer, volleyball, basketball, swimming, and then the one sport that did stick with me was hockey. So hockey is a very competitive sport, for sure, absolutely, and I traveled a lot for hockey when I was younger. Um, it was definitely a big part of my life, and then when I got kind of to the end of high school, I realized that I wasn't really going anywhere with hockey, and I didn't want to pursue that. It is an expensive sport, 
So I ended up training probably once a week instead of five to six days a week when I played competitive hockey. So once a week being on the ice wasn't enough for me. So I started going to the gym and that's when I fell in love with weights. As I mentioned before in my earlier video, I think it was the first video I posted. I never really had body issues. I mean, every girl sort of has that one thing or even guy, like guys and girls both have that one thing that they're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, my legs are too fat. My stomach is too tight or my stomach's too loose. My stomach's too tight. Oh, my, my stomach's too loose. You know, I want to get the fat off my arms and so on. So for me, um, mine was definitely my legs. So I was a goalie in hockey. Obviously, I had bigger legs. And that wasn't something that really affected me when I started competing. So when I first started competing, I already kind of lived like a healthy lifestyle as opposed to when, you know, I was drinking and partying when I was in college. I didn't really work out too much. I wanted to focus on the experience of college and that's totally fine. I was still 19, 20 years old. Actually, I was 19, 18 years old because I did my first show when I was 20. And I was kind of over that lifestyle. So that's when I transitioned into bodybuilding and transitioned to setting more goals and having something that I wanted to work towards. So that's why I did a show. Now, post-show, um, competitors do tend to get a little bit more depressed because they see their body, what their body body is completely capable of, of getting to 12% body fat, to 15% body fat, even lower, sometimes 8% body fat, depends how lean you get. For me, I wasn't insanely lean for my first show, but I was leaner than the leanest I've ever been. And then my second and third show, I was very lean. But post-show was very hard for me. What I tell competitors is that, or future competitors that want to compete, that come up to me and they say, I want to do a show, I tell them, okay, so don't prep for the show, prep for after the show. Because after the show is really what you mentally need to prepare for. That's when you start to get your water weight back. That's when you start to live not a normal lifestyle because you technically are still reversing into a diet. My past two shows or three shows, I guess, I've rebounded pretty bad and I really want to learn from those experiences. The first one I didn't really have a good, actually both of them, I didn't really have like the best guidance as to what I was doing after my show. So I kind of just did my own thing. And that was a big mistake. That's where I kind of like, let myself go and let loose and that's fine because that was a huge lesson that I learned for myself. Another thing was that I sort of had a lot of going on in my life and it wasn't a good time to be reversing out of a diet or to be going into a show. I was transitioning homes, transitioning towns, I'm sorry cities even, like I was moving from Ottawa back to Toronto um, to a new town that I didn't know anyone and I needed to get a job. There was just a lot going on in my life, relationships, so on. So for me, it was a hard time. And I think going into a show, you need to be mentally really stable with yourself. You need to be comfortable with yourself. And you want to be doing it for yourself. You don't want to be doing it for someone else. You don't want to be doing it because you want to do it for your family or for your friends or for a guy or girl or whoever. You want to be doing it for really yourself. Um, and that was one thing that I'm proud that I did. I started competing for myself. I didn't compete for someone else. It was something that I fell in love with. I went to shows, I watched the competitors, I knew the process, I surrounded myself with as many people in the industry as possible um, to get a really good inside look about what it was like before I stepped on stage. So post-show, as I mentioned, is probably the toughest time and that's definitely what you want to be prepared for. So you want to have a good support system, you want to have a good coach that knows what you're reversing out of, knows how to reverse you, and knows your supplements and so on. Obviously your workout routine and cardio routine is super important post-show as well. You don't want to completely cut your cardio like cold turkey because that's when you really start your metabolism just absolutely drops and starts to slow down because of the food you're eating and so on. Wake up if you hate it. I got no patience for all of these other conversations. My body did adjust to all the food that I was eating um, and I did start dieting again after probably about two months. I started dieting again because I missed it so much and I realized that I can't be living this lifestyle without structure, without a diet plan, without a workout plan. I still did cardio once in a while and I still dieted once in a while but not as strict as I would as I should have been which is why I'm starting my prep so late. So I'm starting my prep at 19 weeks out because I did kind of let myself go this off season and that's not something that I am proud of but it is something that is a learning experience and I want people to know that I'm still young, I'm still 21 years old and you might be 21 years old, 22, 23, that's still super young. Um, in this industry this sport is about longevity and you want to be doing it as long as possible and that's not possible if you're drilling your body with drugs, with you know 
insane fluctuation in your diet that doesn't it doesn't perceive longevity it doesn't um, encourage longevity in the sport and I love this sport so much that I want to be doing it for a while so I didn't need to give my body a break mentally and physically and I have a good support system now I have an amazing family that is around me who supports what I do I have amazing friends that support who I do what I do sorry and I have an amazing coach that believes in me and that knows his, you know, knows his stuff and knows what to give me. Um, he's very accountable. And I have my own self-motivation. So I love myself no matter what stage I'm at. And it took me a while to realize that. And I'm still starting to realize that now. There is obviously things that I'm like, okay, that needs improvement or I need to change this. But that's how you improve is you set your goals around those things that make you feel uncomfortable. So yeah, that was a little bit of a blurb about um, like competing and starting to compete. So girls or guys, if you want to compete, seriously know what you're getting yourself into because it is more mentally draining than physically draining at times, actually most of the time. And especially post-show, you need to know that you are going to put on weight again and it's not reasonable and it's not realistic to be stage weight 24-7, 365. It's definitely unrealistic and that's something I want you guys to know is that um, I want you guys to relate to me or on a certain level that you guys are interested in actually watching this because then you're like, oh my god, yeah, I feel the same. Or, oh my god, yeah, it is hard as shit to get up in the morning at 5 a.m. when your dog is sleeping right beside you looking so comfortable. Sorry, my phone's going off. This is really bad. Fix in California right now and she's texting me and she doesn't get a lot of time to text me, so... Okay. But yeah, it's it's a hard it's a hard journey for sure. And I'm very competitive. I'm a super competitive person. So being in this sport is definitely meant for me and it's something that I want to pursue for the rest of my life and go as far as I can in it. That's pretty much it. And I will catch you guys later. If you have any questions or comments, just comment below. Um and then I'll talk about a new topic next week. Um maybe I'll include it in my next vlog or um the vlogs to come. Okay, thanks so much guys. Bye. Morning guys, so it is six o'clock in the morning. I am getting ready for work. So I didn't do fasted cardio this morning because I work at 6.30 and I only have cardio today. So I only have to do abs and that. I'm gonna do intervals on these stairs. I also have an eyelash appointment um, at one or two. Uh, at 2.30 and that's going to be in Toronto and then yeah that's pretty much it so I'm going to walk you guys through so really what I do for my morning routine is the same thing as what I do um, after fasted so I just make my breakfast get ready for the day and then I saw I'm wearing my robe because it's really cold in my house and Jake wants to say hi of course He's not very talkative this early. And he's camera shy. Now he wants his belly rubbed. He's snorting. You're so cute. You're so cute. Bye. people who say that I don't turn red after cardio let's see here yes I am brown I am half Indian but I am red AF right now and honestly as the more I talk the less red I get so the less you'll believe me but I actually turn beet red okay also, I am 17 weeks out tomorrow. It is January 17th? What the F? 
clearly I don't know my days because I just checked and it's January 19th. That just goes to show how often I check the date. Cool. That's great. Probably stop videotaping myself and go home and shower and eat breakfast. So yesterday I had a fun little experience. I got my eyelashes done. As you can see, they're super long. I love them. I heard girls talking about all the time, oh, like I have to get my extensions done. I want eyelash extensions. Eyelash extensions are so smart. Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, what the hell? Why don't I get it done? So I got it done and I am obsessed. I'm not wearing any eye makeup right now. And I feel so glamorous. Um, anyways, I thought I'd share that fun news with you guys.